our opponent won the die roll. This hand is certainly keepable. So let's keep this one. Opponent with a turn one implement of combustion. And we can lead with a swamp here. Don't have any turn one plays. No two drop. And we can play out our automaton and say go. Next turn, don't have a play lined up yet, but we could maybe use our build to smash if our opponent were to block. Although mobile garrison is a nice pickup here. We could attack and basically trade our build to smash for salivating gremlins if our opponent blocks, or we can just play out our mobile garrison. Opponent probably has a way to pump up there Salivating Gremlins here next turn, giving it plus two plus oh and trample. And if that were the case, then we don't have a great block with our mobile garrison, or at least we would be trading. So actually already an interesting decision here. I think the more mana efficient play is probably just to play out the mobile garrison. So I think I'll go with that rather than the more aggressive build to smash line. Opponent might also not block, in which case we could get in for two free points of damage, but uh, I think this is still fine. So our opponent does have land number four, they're mono red so far, and they still haven't used their implement of combustion, so they might have some expensive improvised cards they wanna play. They're going to combat. Let's see if they attack. They do. All right, so I think we probably want to crew here and probably going to eat a combat trick from the opponent with this salivating gremlins, but uh, it's probably not the end of the world if they spend their mana on a combat trick this turn. And it's a build to smash. All right, so not the end of the world since it's not an artifact, so we won't get trampled over. And if they didn't have something to cast last turn, now that they used build to smash, they probably can't cast anything else. So that's actually good for us. We picked up a gear smasher, so still don't have land number four, but a gear smasher is a nice three drop here to have. So let's go ahead and attack first. And then play out our Gear Smasher. And if now one of our creatures dies, then we could get it back with our Resourceful Return, especially if the Gear Smasher dies, then we get the value from the Resourceful Return, also drawing us a card. Opponent still didn't sack the Implement of Combustion, so maybe they have a 6 mana Improvise card here. Hopefully it's not a Dragon. Although if we do draw a land and our opponent has a Dragon, then we have the Chandra's Revolution. Instead it's just a Foundry Assembler, 3-3. That's fine, but it does pump up the gremlins. So we'll take four here. Drop to 16. And land is nice. So now we have a bunch more options. We could uh, attack first, use a build to smash if our opponent does block. Hopefully they don't have a trick. Could just fire off this Chandra's Revolution, which is pretty mana efficient. 
and also ties up one of the opponent's mana. And that's pretty much it since Resourceful Return doesn't have a creature yet in the graveyard. So yeah, maybe just firing off the revolution is the best thing we can do here. Could also use the Welder Automaton's ability, but it's probably better to use a revolution at that point. It is bad that it's our only removal spell at this point, but if we're aggressive enough then we might get a good trade with a build to smash as well. We can probably just tap the untapped land, just in case our opponent does have a trick they want to use, they have to use it now. Alright, and now let's move to combat, hit for 4. And next turn, if we draw land, that's good. If we don't draw land, we can probably cast whatever we draw. If our opponent kills one of our creatures, we have the resourceful return. If they have a big blocker, we have a build to smash. So we're in a decent position, although that could change very quickly. Opponent just hitting us for two. and an Inventor's Apprentice as the follow-up. And we did find a land, so that's nice. So 2-3 does block our Welder Automaton. Opponent still with two cards in hand, so they could easily still have something that can interact with us. If our opponent has a Precise Strike, then our Build to Smash on the Welder Automaton would still be enough to punch through. If your opponent has a shock, that could get awkward, but I think if your opponent had a shock, they probably would have used it by now. The more mana efficient play would just be playing one of our five drops here, but that does mean we don't get to attack. Could also attack, use build to smash, and still use the welder automaton, but it's probably better to develop our board here. Then the question is do we want to play the etherborn or the sailback? With the etherborn, we can make a 4 3 and a 1 1 which I think line up better here with what we're trying to do. The 1-1 one, one is an extra artifact for the return, we can also sacrifice it with a Gear Smasher and gets trampled with Build to Smash, so we can move to combat just in case our opponent wants to do anything, but I doubt it. And then play out the Aetherborn. And say go. And then next turn we can potentially make some attacks if we want to, especially if we draw land, we can use our build to smash and still play the sail back. Opponent is gonna do something end of turn here. For three mana could be a hungry flames, perhaps. Taking out our Aetherborn. Yep. So that was a reason to perhaps play the sail back. but at least we got the Hungry Flames out of our opponent's hands, which is a very good card. And we still have the sail back for next turn. All right, blue mana for the opponent, so they found their second color. So I'm guessing their last card is probably a blue card, and they do still have this implement of combustion, but if they sacrifice it, then the Inventor's Apprentice would not get plus one plus one anymore. So let's see if the opponent attacks here. They do end with both. Alright, what does that mean? I probably want to block the Inventor's Apprentice if I block anything, so then the two damage will stick around and our opponent can't sacrifice the implement this turn. I don't think we have any other great blocks available. Don't think we want to chum block at this point. So yeah, let's go to blocks and I think just block here. If our opponent kills our Gear Smasher, that's fine. And we still have a Resourceful Return as well, so... I think this is fine. So we just take 2, down to 10. And what is our opponent's big finish? Nothing. Alright. So they might have another interactive instant, maybe. We did pick up a land, so... That makes Sailback plus Build to Smash an option. 
do also still have our resourceful return, but that's not super mana efficient this turn. So I think we probably just want to attack with everyone, play the sail back and go from there. And if our opponent wants to maybe kill one of our creatures, we can save it with build to smash. If they at least kill it while we're attacking, could maybe leave back one of our blockers just in case our opponent can remove the sail back end of turn and we take a bunch more damage, but I like being aggressive here when we have this build to smash in hand. So yeah, let's move to combat. Hit with everyone. And I'm not gonna use a build to smash if uh, we don't have to. Can still use it later. And now we can play out our sail back and say go. Opponent's at 9. We have the slightly better board state and the return can also be very good later. Can only use build to smash on attacking creatures so wouldn't be able to use it now on our creatures. Gear smasher from the opponent, that's fine. Let's see if they finally decide to sacrifice their implement. Ice over on our gear smasher. All right, that happens. And no great attacks for the opponent here. But now this build to smash is gonna be pretty good, I think. Also picked up an ether poisoner, which is nice. So if we attack with the sail back, our opponent could just double block, which would be a fine trade for them. But then we get to get them with the build to smash. Uh, question is if we also want to attack with our welder automaton, and I don't think we want to, because if they block, we're forced to use the trick to save the automaton, which kind of gives away that we have a build to smash and don't really want to use it to save the automaton here. Uh, could also cast Resourceful Return pre-combat just to see what we draw off of it. Maybe that changes our play slightly and we can get back our Aetherborn here. And use our black mana. See what we draw. Found a Gifted Aetherborn and an Ambitious Aetherborn. All right, so... That's pretty good. Let's go ahead and move to combat. Probably want to speed up our play slightly. And see how our opponent blocks, if at all. Alright. Opponent just took it. So now we get to play out our, I think, Gifted Aetherborn over the Aether Poisoner. and say go. We could have also used the build to smash to deal three to our opponent and then the welder automaton next turn finishes them off, which probably would have been fine. But I don't think we're really losing in the spot and we can still use the build to smash next turn probably if we just attack with everyone. Opponent tapping a lot of mana. For a weld fast wingsmith, that's fine can gain flying if they play an artifact. No attacks from the opponent. Can probably attack once again with our sail back. Do we also want to attack with the Aetherborn? We probably do. Opponent might just trade it with the Wingsmith, which is fine for us. I don't think our 2-1 nor our 1-1 are attacking. And then, uh, yeah, go from there. All right, the Wingsmith in front of the Gifted Aetherborn, but they'll have to double block our sail back, which is not gonna end up well for them. So this order is fine. Well, looks like I missed the window for the build to smash. Still getting used to the magic online interface, unfortunately. 
but that's fine. I still get to follow up with a Bizarre Barge and an Aether Poisoner. And we'll just do it again next turn. Opponent also can't sacrifice the implement here, otherwise they lose their Inventor's Apprentice. Scrapper Champion, alright, that's good to know about. Good card. For sure. But next turn if we can attack with the Bizarre Barge and use the Build to Smash, that's probably gonna be game. Despite the Scrapper Champion. Could also tap our Ambitious Aetherborn to crew the Bizarre Barge. But I would rather have it on defense, I think. All right, now we gotta make sure to use our build to smash. Implement getting sacrificed to the gear smasher. They still get to draw their card off of it. So maybe they can find something that interacts with our Bizarre Barge here. And I guess we can just finish off our opponent here, rather than playing our Aetherborn. Alright, let's move on to sideboarding. So opponent with a red-blue improvise artifact kind of deck. Do we want to change anything? Could maybe play the club security as it blocks our opponent's creatures quite nicely. Maybe the Malfis squad is not as good as the club security in this matchup. This probably looks fine. Alright, this hand unfortunately we're not gonna be able to keep with only one land. If this was a mountain then I would think more about it but yeah, I don't think we can keep this one, unfortunately. This one is a very solid mull to six. So we will be keeping this one. Turn to Gifted Aetherborn, turn four Bizarre Barge into Club Security to crew the Bizarre Barge. Question here is, do we keep lands on top with our Scry or not? Because we would like to hit land number four but we also don't want to be flooding and we do have to make that decision here we probably want to bottom this I think we want to try and hit more spells and we're not playing too many mana sinks and there we go we draw a land so yeah make sure to play our swamp for the etherborn turn two opponent with red blue and a three drop is nice here so we're gonna curve out quite nicely with our gear smasher into probably the bazaar barge first and then the club security so we can crew the bazaar barge right away opponent probably all right foundry inspector so that can actually trade with our etherborn And build to smash is not terrible, although I don't think we want to use it here. Question is if we want to trade our Aetherborn for Foundry Inspector, and I think the answer is no. So I think I'll just play out a Gear Smasher here and say go, and then save the build to smash for maybe the Bizarre Barge. For opponent attacks, I will gladly put the Gear Smasher in front, even though our opponent could have their own build to smash, which they did show us last game. Is this a Hungry Flames on the Aetherborn? Nope, Salvating Gremlins, that's fine. Nope, 
no attacks from the opponents. And Oval Chase Daredevil. That's quite the draw. So if we play that first, we can maybe offer the trade next turn and then play the Bizarre Barge to get it back. I think that's probably the play here. So again, no attacks with the Aetherborn. Gear Smasher doesn't do much. Yeah, let's play the Daredevil here. And say go. Gear Smasher from the opponent. And another Aetherborn. Alright, so now I think I like attacking with the Daredevil and I'll pretty much trade it with whatever our opponent wants. But they'll probably just take four here is my guess. Alright, they drop to 16 and I think we'll follow up with the club security here rather than another Aetherborn. And maybe next turn we can make another big attack. Implement of Combustion, so that'll pump the Gremlins. Opponent can also sacrifice it with a Gear Smasher to deal an additional point and not have to spend their mana. If the Gremlins attack, we know about their opponent's build to smash. So if we block with the club security, that might not end up great for us. So maybe at that point we do throw the Aetherborn in front, since we do still have a second gifted Aetherborn. Opponent is attacking with the Gremlins, so yeah, I think I don't hate blocking with the Aetherborn here. Opponent tramples over for one, but we gain two, so we go up to 21. And no play from the opponent, and Shock is very nice. So that could allow us to have a very efficient turn of Aetherborn, Build to Smash, plus Shock. I'm definitely interested in attacking with these two. And then if your opponent has any trick, we can interact with both Build to Smash and Shock. If they trade with the Daredevil, we can just play the Bizarre Barge and get the Daredevil back. Like attacking question, do we attack with the Gear Smasher? Since if your opponent's planning to maybe double block here, then we can get in for two points. So maybe attacking with the Gear Smasher is fine. If your opponent blocks with their Gear Smasher, then we get in for more damage on the other unblocked creatures. So yeah, let's send in everyone. Alright. Inspector in front of Gear Smasher. And this trade. So... Yeah, I think this is fine. I'm not gonna do anything unless their opponent does anything, and then we'll follow up with the Bizarre Barge. Opponent sacks the implements. Alright, play the Bizarre Barge. And return the Daredevil. Alright. Not a bad turn. Glass Blower's Puzzle Knots from the opponent. Alright. So they're gonna scry two and get to energy. But what they need here is board presence, and the Puzzle Knot is not gonna help them with that. Alright, Ambitious Aetherborn. So yeah, I think we're just playing out our Daredevil here to crew our Bizarre Barge. Get in for 8. Opponent drops to 5. And should be able to close out the game next turn. Unless their opponent has something 
really special, maybe a Baral's expertise to bounce our two creatures and our artifact. That could definitely help them out, but I think that's about the only card I can think of that can really help them. Four mana. And a Puzzle Knot, so must be an improvised card for five mana. Could be the... Nope, just a Foundry Assembler, that's not gonna do it. Maybe the improvised card that makes it two Thopters could have saved them for a turn. But as it stands, we can Chandra's Revolution them. Could even just build to smash. Although Chandra's Revolution seems safer here. Opponent with the one mana, do they have a shock for our Daredevil? We can crew the Bizarre Barge in response. And uh, can still crew the Bizarre Barge with the club security anyways. Alright, that works. Crew over here. Not that it matters. Opponent still has red floating. And move to combat. And that's gonna do it. Alright, sweet. Won our first match. We'll be back for the second one.